Hey geniuses, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to do this video because it's about one of my favorite topics, money. <laughs> so for real, I love talking about money. I'm not a financial guru, but I am a PhD student who has secured over $200,000 so far in grants, scholarships, and fellowships. So I love talking about how to fully fund your PhD or graduate journey. So far, I have paid zero dollars for tuition and fees, zero dollars for books, I get a monthly stipend just for doing research, and I have not TA'd at all. TA means teacher assistant. I have not taught a class, I have not graded papers while being a PhD student at all. So I just wanted to make that clear because there are a handful of PhD students who have their tuition paid for or get a monthly stipend because they TA and I've never TA'd at all and I never will TA. If you are a fellow grad student or if you're someone interested in funding your education, stay tuned. Before I dive into details, let me give you guys a little background. Pursuing a PhD can be financially challenging. Not a lot of people have the privilege to say that they have their tuition covered or that they haven't paid for books or even that they receive a monthly stipend. So I wanna make it clear that there are a handful of us who do have tuition covered and slash or receive money for doing our research as we would for any other job, but there also are a lot of graduate students and PhD students who do not get paid anything and who do not receive tuition vouchers or any type of support from the department or external resource and therefore are forced to take out loans or to work under the table. And I do wanna make it clear that my situation and other PhD student situations of having funding or receiving a monthly stipend, unfortunately it is not common. It should be common, it should be a given. I believe Believe, but unfortunately it's not the case for everyone. So I believe with strategic planning and persistence, you can have your graduate studies funded. Having a plan is the first step. So before I even applied to PhD programs, my plan was that I am not going to TA. I'm just not, it's not my desires. I already have three years of teaching at an adjunct community college, which I can do a separate video on, on how to become like a professor um, in a sort of way. Adjunct is kind of like a part-time instructor, but I already have three years of of teaching experience by myself as an adjunct instructor at a community college I do not need anymore. My end goal is to not be a professor or even to be in academia at all. So have a plan in mind. And as always, I am honest, I spent about a year researching resources to fund my PhD. I did it during my gap year. So my gap year was during COVID. I spent about 10 hours each week looking for things or looking for resources uh, um, and opportunities to fund my PhD as a first year or as an incoming first year graduate student. And when I submitted my applications to the PhD programs that I was interested in, I let them know I have applied for external funding. I immediately let the programs that I applied to that same day, I let them know I have received full funding, full funded fellowship for one year from this specific fellowship opportunity. Now let's talk about monthly stipend. And I could go on and on about monthly stipend as a PhD student. Um, I am grateful to receive monthly stipend. My department guarantees that if you come into the program, you get a monthly stipend. Now, now, is the funding livable? Barely, but beggars can't be choosers. Um, so when I saw the stipend that I was getting per month, I knew that I had to apply to more scholarships, grants, and fellowships. Because what they were giving me, I knew that it was going to be impossible for me to live off that stipend. So this varies per department, per university, but I believe all departments allow graduate students to stack. Meaning that if you have a scholarship or a fellowship or a monthly stipend from the school that is paying you, let's say $2,000 a month, 2000 a month is pretty average for, um, it's the average amount for a PhD student. Then you could get an external scholarship, fellowship, or grant. And it might not be a monthly stipend, it usually is just one big lump sum, and you can split that into your nine or 12 months of you doing research the school year, whatever, and then that is like going to be your new monthly stipend. So when looking for scholarships and grants, read over the terms and conditions, maybe even reach out to them and ask, hey, can I put this 
money towards my stipend. Like if your tuition is already paid off, you can tell them, hey, my tuition's paid off. I just wanna use this towards my stipend or I just wanna use it for research travel. Now let's talk about strategies for success as far as finding and hopefully being awarded fellowships, grants, and scholarships. I established a very strong network within my academic community. Professors, future colleagues, even people who I found online who just had a bachelor's or master's degree in my field, I would email them and just ask like, hey, like, do you know of any opportunities that um, are available for a PhD, a future in, uh, incoming PhD student looking for funding? And that is how I found pretty much four of these six um, awards that I got. The other two were like internet searches, but a majority of the awards that I have received have been just from networking or from like a listserv that I signed up on. While I was applying to grants, fellowships and scholarships, which for me take about six weeks. I allow myself six weeks because I really, really try my best to make sure that application is as perfect as possible. But in between those times of me applying, I honed in on my grant writing skills. I am in the writing center during those times two, three times a week. I am ensuring that my proposals are compelling and I'm making sure that in my proposals, in my applications, that the committee reads my proposals, read my application, and they clearly understand that it's not just the research that I'm doing that's important, but it's the person behind it who is just as important as the research. Anybody can do research, anybody. But I think the important part when you are applying to scholarships and grants is re and research is not to just use the whole thing to talk about what you're doing and why you're important. Like, yes, that's a good part, but you really, sorry, but you really, really, really have to hype yourself up in a very professional way. And by that, I mean that in my application, I always exemplify the fact that yes, my research is important. Yes, my research impacts communities, but here's how I'm going to take my research if you give me this grant, and here's how I'm going to make a change on a small scale, not a large scale because I am just one person, but here's how I am going to initiate a change. I'm not just gonna take this money and use it for research. I'm gonna use it for research, and then I'm gonna use it for community outreach. I always talk about community outreach even though it's not really something that I am getting my degree in, I find ways to do community outreach. So I tell them, you know, I'm gonna use this money to do my research and to maybe give myself a stipend if allowed, and then I'm going to present at conferences or I'm going to um, present it to a community, do a community workshop. I'm going to do something so that way all these people know, not just about my work, but who funded my work? Because I always have to, you always have to give acknowledgement to the people or the companies who funded your work. I'm pretty much letting them know, just like with any other entrepreneur or content creation, that if you give me the funding for this, I'm gonna let as many people as possible know that this is sponsored by you. So you are getting like a promo as well. To wrap this all up, funding your PhD is challenging, but it is not impossible. It's really not. And I feel like this last piece of advice is well known, but I should reiterate it in case it's not. You don't always have to apply to the biggest jackpot. I have a scholarship for 1,200, for 2,500, for 4,000, for 16,000, for $62,000. The amount that I have accumulated over the years to get where I'm at now at over $200,000 of funding, it's it's grab and go. I know it's tempting to apply for those big jackpots, like the ones that are 55,000, the ones that say, we will fund your entire PhD up to five years. Like I get it, those are very tempting. And I have applied for them too, but it doesn't hurt to apply for the small ones as well. And by small ones, I don't just mean like small in money, but ones that are being funded by your city, by your state. It doesn't have to be a big nationwide one. You don't have to always look for the federal government or the really big ones. I really believe there's a lot higher chances for applicants who apply on a local scale. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. I could probably do like a whole nother video talking about money as a PhD student because it's it's a lot deeper than it looks on the surface. Like it's very complex. I didn't even talk about like taxes as a PhD student or how they tax my grants. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy how they like literally tax my grants. And I'm like, 
why are you taking 11,000 from me? So that could be a whole other video, but I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like my video and subscribe. I will have more videos coming, just kind of destigmatizing PhD life. I see a lot of videos now that are thankfully destigmatizing PhD life. We're not all old white men or young white men becoming old white men eventually. We are not all boring. We are not all broke. <laughs> we are tired. Most of us are tired, but there are even some of us who have like a really strict schedule and work very specific hours of like nine to six and do not work before nine or do not work after six. That's not me. I'm not that disciplined, but we are normal people. We are just like everyone else. That's one thing that I want to get across on my channel. Like I am a normal person. I am a normal young woman. You should not stereotype me to my title or to what you think my title is that I should be boring and dull and I should be stressed out. That's one thing I hate. But like I said, that will hopefully be showcased through my channel content so that other young people in high school, even middle school, or even college now can see me and say like, oh, she's doing it, I can do it too. Yes, like you can do it too, you all can do it. I believe in all of you. So yeah, you guys can share your experience or comments um, below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.